Well, February is Heart Health Month, and there's a lot you might not know about the body's hardest working muscle. Joining me today is Dr. Christy Clark, President and CEO of Health Texas Primary Care Doctors. Welcome back. Thank you Thank so much you, for Fiona. being here. It's good to be here. You know, heart health, of course, is important, and we have a few questions from people about just that. So the first question is from Facebook. What is the difference between a heart attack and a stroke? So a heart attack and a stroke is a very common question that people have. And it sounds like it's simple, but it's actually a little bit more complex. There's a lot of similarities and a lot of differences. I think the simplest way to think about it is um, that it is an interruption in blood flow. So for whatever reason, usually a cholesterol plaque or a, a, a debris plaque, there becomes an interruption of blood flow, which delivers oxygen. So when the blood flow to the heart gets interrupted, that would be what's called a heart attack. And when the blood flow to the brain gets interrupted, that would be what's called a stroke. So those are the, that's basically what it is. The more important, uh, the more important uh, thing we need to remember as, as patients, or if, if this happens, from a standpoint of a heart attack, most of us know that if we get chest pain or chest pressure or squeezing sensation, we, we might have that associated with nausea or vomiting. And most of us know, well, gosh, I better go to the emergency room or call 911. Interestingly, a stroke has a little bit different symptoms, and those symptoms can be more subtle, and many times patients either don't recognize them or they think, oh, it'll get better. And those are things like maybe some vision loss that may come and go. Maybe it's numbness or weakness of one side of your arm or leg, or perhaps you've become very dizzy or you, know, you um, are having trouble finding words. So sometimes these symptoms will come and go, so many people kind of ignore it, but those would be your symptoms of a stroke. And remember that brain is time, so it's important to pay attention to those kinds of uh, factors too and call 911. They can help you. Don't, don't, drive to your, don't drive yourself to the ER. Right. Call 911. Right. All good, all good things to know. Our next question is from Twitter. If I have diabetes, am I at a greater risk for having heart disease? Absolutely. Um, uh, diabetes is one of the large, is the biggest risk factor for having diabetes. In fact, um, as a diabetic, 65% of diabetics will die from cardiovascular disease. And so all of those good things that your doctor tells you to do to help decrease your risk of heart attack are even more important in diabetics. So as a diabetic, keep your blood sugar less than 140. Keep your cholesterol low. Keep your blood pressure less than 180. Ask your doctor if you should be on aspirin. Uh, make sure you're exercising. Low-fat diet, very important, keeping a good body weight. Super important for diabetics, and you may even reverse your diabetes. Okay, another question that people are asking right now, what is a normal level for my cholesterol to be at if I'm at risk for heart disease due to family history? So cholesterol can be, cholesterol is a number we all like to follow. Cholesterol is important. Your total cholesterol is made up of cholesterol, triglycerides, mm -hmm. and also HDL and LDL. We know as physicians that the most, the, the, risk, the risk for heart disease really comes from having low HDL, which is happy cholesterol, you can think about it that way, and LDL or lousy cholesterol. So the American College of Cardiology gives us a lot of guidelines. And the important thing is not so much the total cholesterol, but also whether or not your LDL is at goal. Remember, the LDL is lousy or your bad cholesterol. So if you are a person who has high blood pressure, the American College of Cardiology would want you to keep that LDL less than 130. If you're diabetic, it's important for that number to be even lower, closer to 100. So it's important to work with your physician if you do have high cholesterol. Diet and exercise can help change some of that and may help us lower that 10 or 15 percent. But many times we need medications also to help bring down our cholesterol. Okay, great stuff from Dr. Christy Clark. Remember, Health Texas has 17 primary care clinics in and around the San Antonio area. You can find more information about them on their website healthtexas.org, or give them a call at 210-731-HTMG. That's 210-731-HTMG, or just head to healthtexas, again, .org.